are we less intelligent by being... I mean, Esther and I, we've both got a strong northern accent, you know. Are we, are we less intelligent? Are we less ambitious as a result of that? Of course not, because it's important to point out the linguistic reality and social reality are very different. From a purely linguistic point of view, no sound can be inherently one thing or the other. So saying bath versus bath or bus and bus, you know, these sounds do not connote friendliness, unfriendliness, intelligence, sexiness, you know, even if it's a positive stereotype. From a linguistic point of view, it makes it, it's completely nonsensical. But in terms of societal reality, we hear certain sounds, certain accents, we make knee-jerk reactions. I just wondered, I don't know if you've seen this research or not, but is, it, is this what southern people think of northerners be, of being less intelligent when they hear a northern accent? Or do even northerners think <laughs> that northerners are less intelligent with their accent than, than southerners? Well, that may be the case uh, for some people, certainly. I mean, even within the north, we have to remember that there's different... You know, I've applied a trichotomy approach. So if you take the Magister accent, we could say... I'm not suggesting there's only three. What I am saying, though, is we could think in terms of, though it's a loaded term, I suppose, neutral, uh, the kind of people who say I don't have an accent, which is impossible, general, and then the broad. And so even Northerners and Southerners will modify, as was pointed out in the introduction, uh, to sound less regional. And the point of that is it gets harder to detect where they're from. I think the expectation, it's very simple, that... If you get to a certain place in society, if it's part of social mobility and so on, that you're expected. There's an unwritten rule, I think, or understanding to modify your accent. So you can still sound northern or southern or wherever you're from, but not to the point that you can be identified to a region, a locality within, say, three seconds of speaking, whereas it's going to take a little bit longer. But the sounds themselves, we don't really hear the sounds, we hear the connotations. So if we say that you know, the, the, the stereotype Northerners are whatever they're supposed to be. That's what we hear when we hear Northern accents. And, you know, the states try, try to be a little more neutral. People hear a New York accent, they think, OK, you're a gangster, you're uncouth, you're in your... You know, it, it's the same thing. It makes no sense linguistically, but society uses this as a benchmark, of course, for prejudging people. I like is this now, should it be a protected characteristic under the Equal Opportunities Act? I mean, everything seems to be protected now. You can't say this and you can't say that. We've all got to have sort of, uh, what's it, non-biased teaching and coaching, etc. So why is it that everything else is protected but not the accent? How come that's been forgotten about? I think if we were to protect British accents, we'd be protecting class. And I think at the same time... And that's not a bad thing by any means, but I think also that it's a, it's a taboo subject. I think class is the last taboo, and accent very often is the immediate identification of class. We make class-based judgments based on how people speak. So if someone in the North, let's say Manchester, where I'm based, says the word Saturday, people will say, you don't sound like a Mancunian. That's exactly the point. But I have heard Saturday for the same word. So we got from, quote, neutral to broad. So if we do protect acts, and we're protecting, I think, class-based judgments, people are going to, still going to make them, but that it can't be made overtly in the workplace. And it's important to remember also that accent and language is not about just sounds. That's actually a myth. Ironically, it's about much broader characteristics, race, ethnicity, region, and, of course, class. So sometimes accent has been held up in a court of law for unfair dismissal precisely because it was seen as a stand-in for someone's race. If you protect British accents, though, because implicitly I think foreign accents would be because then you're protecting against discrimination on the basis of nationality. If British accents are protected, I think that's what we're actually protecting. We're protecting class.